To be honest, when it comes to working with code on a remote machine over SSH, tend to avoid it unless it's absolutely necessary. And in the case of working with a Raspberry Pi and some electrical components, when I want to test those components, I obviously have to run that code on the Pi. And so lately, I've been trying out VS Code's functionality for connecting remotely over SSH. And it turns out I really like this feature. So today in the video, I just wanna walk through how to set that up, how to use it, and some of the tips that I have along the way. And so the first thing I wanna do here, I'm over at the command line. I've got a call to SSH set up here to connect to my Raspberry Pi. So this is Pi 6. So I can SSH into that. So that's the first step. Make sure you can actually SSH into the remote machine. Make sure you've got that set up so it's seamless. In other words, you don't have to put in a password or pass arguments to SSH. And then once you've got that set up where you can just SSH in, you are ready to go with VS Code. So let's pop over there. All right, so within VS Code, a couple ways you can do this. In the lower left, there's a status indicator for this remote connection. You can click on that and open up a menu here. Of course, you can get this from the command palette as well. Just put in host here, connect to a host. Or you can use this option here to connect to it in the current window so I don't open up a new window. Either way works. Once you've done that, then in my case, all of the hosts that I have configured inside of my SSH configuration files, which I'll show you where those are at, but I won't show you what's inside of them. So in the SSH directory, I've got a config.d directory. Inside of here, I've got subdirectories. And inside of these, for example, here are my Vagrant configurations. So I've got two of them there for Vagrant VMs called compile kernel, compile Rust. Because I have those set up, so I can just SSH into them, though they're not on right now. If I come over to VS Code, you can see these are in the list as well as down below, you can see Pi 6. And if I filter down by searching for Pi 6 here, I can then just hit return. That'll connect to the remote SSH server. It'll then allow me to open up a folder on that machine. So I can open up a project basically. When I hit Command O, you can see I have completion for the file system on this remote machine. I've got a folder called West GPIO. So I'll go ahead and open that up, select it, click OK. That'll open up the remote folder then, and it'll open it up as if I had it here on my Mac which is pretty cool. And then if you look in the lower left corner here, you can see the indication that this is an SSH connection remotely to the Pi6 node. All right, once everything loads, I wanna show you here in some Python code that I have, I can actually use code navigation. I can hit F12 here on SenseHat, which comes from a library. And you can see there's the library. I could then read through the library code, or I could come back to my code. And that's all made possible because on the remote machine, I've got a Python virtual environment set up. I've got everything installed on the remote so they can work on the remote. I don't want the Mac versions of packages. And then once I've got that set up here, I've got VS Code set up with the remote connection. It can actually see that virtual environment. You can actually see the libraries in there and it can set up navigation to move around those libraries. All right, so I've got some sample code here in Python. I'm gonna take the sense mat and I'm gonna have a message scrolling on the LEDs. I'll show you in a moment here. I'll have it say, hi, mom. Also getting some temperature and humidity information. So now down below in the terminal, because I'm connected to the remote machine, you can see the host here says pi6.lan, just like as if I had connected over at the command line myself here, pi6.lan. Now I can go ahead and run Python here. I can point at the hello world message Python script to have up above. And now when I run that script, I get the humidity and the temperature and it's scrolling the message, hi mom. I'm gonna do that again here so you can see that. There you go, you can see the message there. And in this case, the message is upside down. So maybe if I wanna fix that, I can come back over to my code here and above calling the show message, I might come in here and do something like sense dot and then see, is there some sort of rotation maybe? And of course, Copilot's working as well though, that's not always reliable. Instead, I like to have the completions from the library. So you can see right here, a set rotation. I can then pass in 180, that'll flip it around. Now, when I come down here, run that code again. There you go, you can see the message is right side up now. So that's all it takes to be able to rewrite the code here to fix a problem I have with it. I can do that all on my Mac here, and then the actual code is being saved on the remote machine so I can run it on the remote machine and have access to the hardware in this case on the Raspberry Pi. And of course, it's not just Python, anything I can develop inside of VS Code. For example, if I've got some C code here, I've got this kernel module driver I was working on here. This reads from a different sensor I have on the board over there. I'll show you a picture of that. This is a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. This is separate of the sense hat. So I've got a kernel module I set up to be able to interact with it to get the temp and the humidity data. And you can see this is C code here. 
And first thing I want to show here is I've got all my libraries configured, all my includes, so that I can actually just jump right into the kernel code if I'm not certain about something. For example, if I want to jump in and look at this function here, GPL get value, that's part of the kernel. Hop right in, there you go. I can then dig around in here. Maybe I come into this method and I can look at the code that's involved. And of course, if I close this, come back over here. If I'm not certain about how to make a call to a function or I'm not certain which functions are available, I have completions here as well. So if I want to set a value, I could look that up. And of course, I have Copilot working as well, which is made possible by the fact that extensions can run on the remote as well. Before we look at that, though, I want to show you why this works here for navigating. And that's because my libraries are all included up above. And then I can just jump into any one of these and I can take a look around. That's why the completions are working because I actually set up properties, configure the C environment inside of VS Code, and I passed all the paths to the various headers. And thus I get my code navigation. Now I mentioned extensions here to be able to get things like Copilot to work, languages to work, syntax highlighting, et cetera. Let's just take a look at extensions real quick here. All right, so when I open up extensions now, because I'm connected over SSH, there's actually two sets. There are the local installed extensions, and then there are the remote or the SSH Pi 6 installed extensions. So these are extensions that are installed on just this Pi 6 node. They're running over there as well. And if I look through my list of local extensions, these are things that are going to affect the IDE itself. For example, highlighting comments in my code here. So this needs to run locally because the code that I'm showing here is local. Whereas other things like the C extension, that actually needs to run remotely so it can find libraries, compile code, debug code, etc. And then one more thing I want to point out when it comes to extensions, if you scroll through your previously installed local extensions, occasionally you'll see an option here to install an SSH. Basically, what this means is this extension needs to run on the remote and it's not installed right now. And so if you're working with Scala, you could hit install an SSH. It'll install it over on the Pi 6 then, and then it'll show up down below and it'll be in this list here because it's now installed on the Pi 6 node. And there it is right at the top. And in this case, I have to reload the window. Go ahead and do that. And now I'll have that extension available, though the sorting is different now. So if you have any issues with an extension, make sure to check and see if you need to get it installed on the remote. Also, you can configure a set of extensions that you can install onto every remote you connect to. So that's another option. In my case, I have eight Raspberry Pis, so that's probably something I'll set up next as I want to work on code on more of them. I don't want to have to install the extensions each time. And that's going to be in your VS Code settings. Give me a second here, just looking through my list to see what we've done here. All right, so with the C code, what I should do here, I should hop out to my Pi6 node, which I could do over here at the terminal as well. It's the same machine. I could change into my directory here. And I'm going to get rid of the module I have loaded right now. All right, so inside of my directory here with my C code, I can run a make here. This will rebuild my module. And then I can do an ins I can insert it. Let me just do it this way. On the end, I have the insert mod. When I'm developing these modules, I usually unload them and then put them right back in once I make some changes. All right, so it's loaded now. I can even do LS mod here. There it is. And so now I can use the device that I set up. And I can cut out the contents of it, and there you go. I've got temperature information. Sometimes there's some errors with this. The sensor I have is not exactly reliable, but for the most part, it's working. And so it's been a lot of fun to be able to develop the code here efficiently and see inside of VS Code and have it all just run on the remote machine. All right, so I think that's a good introduction to using VS Code with SSH to develop remotely. I find that it gets rid of a lot of the problems that I have when I'm working on a remote machine writing code. And there aren't a lot of gotchas. Maybe the only thing that's somewhat annoying is if I reboot the machine, I can't use the editor until it comes back up. Well, you kind of can, but you have to click a message to cancel out trying to reconnect. However, once the machine is booted back up here, actually, let's do this here. Let's go ahead and reboot that machine, and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, you can see right now I'm prompted to reload the window. Of course, I could try, but it's not going to be back up quite yet. If I have a fast machine like my Pi, which boots in maybe 10 seconds, it's not a problem to just wait. Sometimes it might be nice to be able to work on the code without clicking reload or cancel, or in this case, waiting for it to come back up. In this case, it failed then, so I could go ahead and retry, or I could close the remote. Let's see what more actions has here. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any way for me to be able to continue to work on the files. It seems like it needs a remote to be up and running to even access the files that I had opened. Not a big deal. It's just a small problem that I've ran into. Otherwise, I don't tend to have any issues. So let me know down in the comments down below, what do you think about this? Do you do any remote SSH development? Is this something that might be useful? Have you used it before? Or do you use an alternative like SSHFS? Let me know down below.